I talked about tax deductions. So cannabis businesses pay hefty taxes. I think there's this misconception that because it's federally illegal, these businesses don't pay federal, state and federal taxes. Nothing could be further from the truth. And in fact, I would say that cannabis businesses pay more than their fair share of taxes because there is an inability to take the deductions that a, a federally legal business would take on, you know, on, on federally illegal product. Now, there are business and tax planning um, strategies. I'm not a, a, a tax attorney, although uh, some of my colleagues are, and we have worked with, uh, with businesses who um, are looking for ways to legally structure their business but not pay effective tax rates of you know, 75%, which is what some of these businesses end up doing. So again, there's something called 280E, and this is businesses that engage in illegal drug traffic, trafficking generally cannot get certain tax credits or deduct operational expense, expenses from their federal returns. All of this is to say that taking tax deductions in the cannabis space is not a straightforward process. And in fact, you cannot take tax deductions on illegal federal activity. So it takes a lot of planning. It takes um, you understanding that you are paying a lot of taxes. And the there's the misconception that I'm here to tell you um, is not true that you, as a cannabis business, are paying a hefty amount of federal and state taxes. One thing I, I do want to talk about also is discrimination. And when I say discrimination, what I'm talking about is, let's say you have a patient who has a medical card and they are using medical marijuana and they get drug tested at work and they fail a drug test. They're not under the influence of medical marijuana while at work, but let's say they used a medical marijuana product the night before they had a shift, but it's still in their system because medical marijuana testing is not as sophisticated as some, you know, as say um, alcohol testing, or it's not as, as accurate as I should say. And if you have it in your system for say a month, sometimes you'll have a, a positive drug test. Can an employer fire an employee who was not under the influence while they were at work, but used medical marijuana, say the night before a shift? There are some cases, um, and these are, this is not federal because the Americans with Disabilities Act federal statute, but there are state statutes which would tell you that, um, you know, and some of these state courts have interpreted it in such a way that you can't fire or refuse to hire someone simply because they failed a drug test. Where does this leave employers? Obviously, if someone is, say, operating a forklift in your factory or you know a warehouse and they crash into a wall and they failed a drug test because and you find out and can prove they were under the influence um, you know you would think it's you're within your right to fire that person and I'm not here to say that you're not within your right all I'm saying is there is a growing body of case law in Massachusetts and elsewhere which you would be well advised to to look at to consult an employment attorney uh, to understand what the rules of the road are.